Hi boys and girls, I'm back with another episode of Gooseberry Park. If you remember yesterday in chapter 15, we read about the sign that they were going to send for Stumpy to find them. And if you remember correctly, Gwendolyn came up with the idea of looking for the watch, putting the watch that glows in the dark outside so that Stumpy could see it at night when she flew over. And they were going to send Murray the bat out to find that watch. Now Murray was supposed to be back by dinner, which if you remember correctly was going to be lasagna with that watch. So let's read chapter 16 and see if he did just that. Chapter 16 is called The Sign. And we know, now know what that sign is. Murray arrived with the watch, still in time for lasagna. He zipped down the chimney, popped out into the living room, and plunked that precious object on the feet of Kona, who was sleeping beneath Gwendolyn's bowl. Professor Albert had gone out to play bingo. Wonderful job, dear, Gwendolyn applauded with her claws. Kona jumped to his feet at the sound of her voice. It's here! We have it! he asked. Ta-da! Murray pointed to the watch on the floor. The dog took one look and nearly burst into tears, but he knew it would be an undog-like thing to do. Murray, Kona said, after dinner you'll have to take the watch up to the roof and stay there for the rest of the night, or until Stumpy finds you. Right-o, said Murray. I can use some fresh air anyway. You won't believe my cousin Ralph's apartment. All those pieces of moth. Yuck. Did you have any trouble, dear? asked Gwendolyn. Nah, said Murray. Murray was napping. I mean, Ralph was napping, and his second favorite hobby is that. Besides, I've been sneaking things out of places all of my life. If Stumpy shows up tonight, you'll have more sneaking to do, said Kona. You'll have to sneak her in here. A snap, said Murray. This house is full of holes. Wake me up, dear, if I'm sleeping, said Gwendolyn. Me too, said Kona. I'll never understand who animals who sleep at night, Murray said, shaking his head. They miss all the good stuff that happens. After he gobbled down a huge plate of lasagna, garlic bread, and, a, and everything else, the little bat picked up the watch and flew out to the roof to wait for Stumpy. Inside the house, the night seemed endless. The professor came back home and went to bed. Kona and Gwendolyn went down and tended to the sleeping babies while, for a while and then returned upstairs. They were restless, constantly listening for footsteps on the roof, forever looking out the window. What time is it, dear? Gwendolyn asked. The news is over. Professor Albert's in bed, so it must be past midnight. <gasps> Poor little Stumpy, said Gwendolyn, all alone out there, worried about her children. Natural disasters are so hard on families, especially families that live in trees, said Kona. The crab nodded. The two friends talked and talked and waited and waited. Up on the roof, Murray was keeping himself Murray was keeping himself occupied, making lists in his head. First, he listed things that were green: limes, olives, Christmas trees, Kermit the Frog. Then he listed all the things that were yellow: corn, sunflowers, lemon, big bird, blue things, swimming pools, berries, the sky, and Cookie Monster. Murray had watched a lot of Sesame Street in Professor Albert's house. He had gone through the purple list, an orange list, a red list, a white list, and was just beginning a stripe list when he heard someone in the trees whispering his name. Murray. The little bat jumped. For a second, he forgot about Stumpy. His cousin Ralph had found him. Nope, he said. Murray, that's you. A little shadow with a big fluffy tail leapt from the trees and landed on the roof with a thump. Murray knew that it was someone he knew. Stompy, Stompy, he jumped up. Good golly, Miss Molly. There she is. The little red squirrel scurried across the roof and into the light of the watch. Tears were streaming down her face, which made tears stream down Murray's face, too. And the two stood there on the roof, hugging and crying and hugging and crying. My baby, said Stumpy. They're fat and sassy, said Murray. Kona, the little squirrel cried. Fat and bossy, Murray started to cry even harder. Stumpy laughed and began to wipe away Murray's tears. And you, Murray? she asked gently. Just fat, answered the little bat with a cheery grin. I bet I have the worst garlic breath. Murray sneaked Stumpy through a crack in the house's foundation, and the little mother ran straight across the basement, basement to where her babies were laying sleeping. She jumped into the box and picked up all three at once, holding them tight and kissing their little red heads. The children were drowsy and half asleep, but they seemed to recognize their lost mother for they held tight to her with her tiny paws. Murray thought he might start bawling again. Where are Gwendolyn and Kona? Stumpy asked over the sleeping bat's head. 
I forgot, cried Murray. I was supposed to tell them first thing. Murray flew up the steps and did a snappy dance across the living room floor. Kona raised his big head, and he looked up at Murray. Is she here? With a big grin, Murray nodded excitedly and pointed the way to the basement. Stump, Kona called. He picked up Gwendolyn, whose antenna flew at the sound of Stumpy's name, and everyone ran down to the basement. The joy the friends shared in their reunion was the best treasure of all to be found on Miller Street that evening, and Kona surprised himself. For once, he cried. So Stumpy's back. Yay! Tomorrow, after our Google Meet, we are going to read The Wonders of Technology. And you and I are already learning about the wonders of technology every day when we have to do our classwork and our tests and everything else online. Tomorrow, we'll find out what the book means by that. So think about that tonight, and we'll talk about it tomorrow. See you then.